To love and be loved is the beauty of life. Many people yearn for peace, love, and happiness. Individual dispositions and upbringing will lead people to find happiness in different ways. Some people get married for happiness, while some get involved in extramarital affairs. But sometimes, those extramarital relationships bring them to a tragic end. In this video, we will discuss one of the most haunting and disturbing cases from Queens, New York. The murder of Osoya Gao, a mother of two. Who murdered Osoya Gao and why was she killed? Let's unfold the horrific death of Osoya Gao. Osoya was born in 1971 in Budapest, Hungary and got her early education from a local school in Budapest. At 23, Osoya completed her studies at the Budapest Business College of International Management and Business. She loved travel, listening to music, and attending concerts and parties. Osoya met Howard Klein at a Christmas party in Budapest in 1994. 25-year-old Howard was about to begin his master's in finance at Columbia Business School. They both exchanged love letters and texts for several weeks before holidaying together in Thailand. When Howard returned to New York to begin his studies, he proposed to Osoya, and the two soon got married. After that, Howard established a prosperous boutique capital markets consultancy company, and Osoya worked for several years in Manhattan. In 2005, she gave birth to her first son, Jamie Klein, and in 2009 to her second son, Leo Klein. Then she put a hold on her career to raise their children. After that, she was a stay-at-home mother responsible for looking after her children. On August 2, 2012, the family moved into their five-bedroom home in Forest Hills, where the tragic murder of Osoya took place. Queens Forest Hills neighborhood is a lovely and safe place with tree-lined streets. Tudor-style houses, sweatshops, authentic Italian pizzerias, and several parks. But this peaceful urban oasis was disturbed in the most horrifying way possible in April 2022. A huge black sports bag that appeared suspiciously abandoned on the side of the road in Kew Gardens, Queens neighborhood was reported to 911 operators early on April 16, 2022. It was Glenn Van Nordstrad, 51, who made the call around 8 in the morning as he was returning from walking his dog. His eyes landed on a large wheeled bag thrown across the grass on the sidewalk, close to the intersection of Metropolitan Avenue and Jackie Robinson Parkway. He felt suspicious about the bag, and his dog became aggressive as he approached. Then he noticed that blood was leaking from the bag. Glenn frequently saw bizarre items and dead creatures in the forest park, so he reasoned that the bag might contain animal remains. Therefore, he pushed its side with his leg, but it was heavy. And when he unzipped the bag, he noticed the bare feet of a human being. Then he further unzipped the bag and found the body of a woman. The body was put with its arms folded in a fetal position. After that, Glenn informed the police, who quickly surrounded the area with emergency services. The police searched the body but could not identify the deceased because there was no identification. Police followed the bloody trail, which led the police back to the family's house on Juno Street, which was half a mile away. They found blood on the first floor and in the basement of the home along with a blood-stained knife. Police found 13-year-old Leo on the third floor of the home. Police investigated Leo about the murder, but soon after he was released and cleared of any involvement in the crime. During questioning, Leo told police that his mother went to a show on Friday night and had not returned yet. He told the police he didn't know where his mother was. Following that, police determined that the body in the bag was in fact that of Ursula Gall, 51. Detectives suspected that the murderer was familiar to Miss Gall, since they could not find any evidence of a break-in at the house. Additionally, police stated that Ursula Gall was murdered in her home's basement. The chief medical examiner stated in the medical report that the death was brought on by a neck injury produced by brutal force. According to that, the woman was stabbed in the neck, torso, left arm, and other bodily parts. The body's trachea and carotid arteries both had wounds. Despite this, her hand still bore knife marks on the palms and fingertips. She was stabbed nearly 60 times in her home. When Ursula Gao was assassinated, her husband and their 17-year-old son were both out of town. Prior to the impending graduation of their older son, they were researching prospective colleges. Howard announced their arrival in Portland on his Twitter account on Friday, April 15th. On April 16th, Howard tweeted again, which has since been removed, that they were headed back to New York. They decided to return to New York when Howard received a terrifying message from his wife's phone. According to the police, 
the murderer sent her husband a string of ominous texts using Miss Gao's cell phone in the hours following her death. According to reports, the murderer sent Howard Klein a text message saying, your wife sent me to jail some years ago. I'm back. He also gave a warning, your whole family is next. Soon after, Howard got a call from the police informing him that his wife's murdered body had been discovered close to Forest Park. When Howard returned to New York, he reported to the police that his family was in danger. There was a risk to their lives. Then the police called the case a mystery because no suspects had been identified yet. It was unclear what the murderer was alluding to, and no suspects had been named in the case. The cops kept looking into the matter. They examined Ursula's phone calls and the people she was in contact with, and then a trail was discovered when her phone was examined. On the night of her murder, Ursula communicated with three men. One was the man she went to the Friday night show with. At 12.20 a.m., she went home alone. According to the police, her murderer entered the home after 12.30 a.m., and around 4.30 a.m., the assailant was seen by a surveillance camera carrying her body in her son's hockey bag. The man performing odd chores at the Juno residence for the previous two years was the second man Ursula had been speaking with on the night she was killed. David Bonolo, 44, a supposedly qualified HVAC technician. Bonello had entered the country unlawfully from Mexico 21 years prior. Police found out Bonello consistently showed love to Ursula's post on Facebook. Further research revealed that Bonello often purchased a single red rose from the floral shop across the street from her house. Bonolo also showed a photograph of Ursula, claiming her to be his girlfriend, Tamarin Calixto, the owner of the florist store. From this, the police discovered Ursula and Bonolo were in a relationship. The owner informed the authorities that he had not seen Bonolo in the previous few days. In the meantime, authorities were aware that Ursula and Bonolo had broken up a few weeks before her murder. Bonolo's history of harassment was another factor that alerted investigators of Bonolo's potential to become a killer. During further investigation, police found a pair of blood-soaked boots, a blood-stained t-shirt, and a few bandages in the trash belonging to Bonolo. Detectives began looking for David Bonolo, 44, late Wednesday, April 20th. However, before the investigation could locate him, Bonolo found them. According to reports, he stated, I heard you were looking for me, as he approached the detectives. He was escorted to the 112th precinct, where he allegedly confessed to killing Miss Gall while speaking with police. According to reports, Bonolo said that he had performed work at Miss Gall's home and knew where she kept her spare key, which gave him access he required to commit the murder. On July 7th, Bonolo arrived in court. The prosecution informed the judge that Gao had permitted Bonolo in the house because of her familiarity with him. However, the prosecution said that after engaging in a verbal argument, she repeatedly asked him to leave, but Bonolo resisted leaving. The district attorney claimed that following a disagreement between the two, Bonolo allegedly slashed Gao's throat before stabbing her 58 times. The prosecution told the judge that Gal and Bonolo had a two-year on-again, off-again love relationship. According to the investigation, he reportedly informed authorities that Gal had gave him HIV during the relationship. When he was hauled in for interrogation, he told the investigators, she was cheating on me with someone and she gave me HIV. After hearing all the witnesses and lawyers, the court convicted Bonolo of murder. Bonolo admitted to the first-degree manslaughter charge and on November 16, 2022, he was sentenced to 25 years in jail. The tragic blow of this incident will enormously affect the lives of the two children of Rosolo Gal, who was killed by her lover David Bonola. Melinda Katz, the Queens District Attorney, said, This heinous killing devastated an entire family, left two boys without a mother, and horrified the surrounding community.